Hey guys, welcome back to Popo's Woodwork. So it is July 5th and it's like 90, 93 degrees inside this shop. I really need some air conditioning. So basically what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be doing a job on the Shapoko because I've been getting a lot of emails <clears throat> and a lot of comments where people want me to throw up some more content over this because obviously they're either looking to get one or they already have one and they're trying to learn. So what I'll be doing today is I'm going to be doing a give me Jesus and coffee sign, but I'm going to do it the reversed way. Instead of carving the letters into the sign, I'm going to carve around all the letters. Here's my, here's my little one. She wants to be on camera. So, hey. hey. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I love kids. So what I'm going to be doing is I'll be carving around the letters. The letters are going to be raised. I may do maybe 0.1 of an inch, you know, where I don't want them too high to where they're going to be fragile and break. So we're gonna try something different. I haven't done that yet. We're gonna try it. I've already got it drawn up in the computer because I worked on that last night and uh, I I'll try to walk you through that the best best I could. I found the image online. Let me get this out the way. <clears throat> I found the image online. I put it into Inkscape and I, I traced bitmap and traced the wording of what I needed and then saved that and then uploaded that into Carbide Create. And it, it actually worked pretty good. I didn't, I just, a few things I had to, to fix on some lines that was a little fuzzy, but removing nodes and all that, but that, that was simple. So basically this one was a stress-free job. All I had to do was trace it, upload it into Carbide Create, and now it's ready to cut. So I'm gonna flip you around. I'm gonna show you the design that I got going on and I'll show you what bit. I think on this one, my best bet's gonna be a 1 16th bit and uh, just to do the whole thing. Yeah, you could probably break it up to take a lot of way, more of the meaty stuff away, but I don't feel like doing all the bit changes and trying to figure out when I need to change them. So I'm just gonna cut the whole thing with a 16th inch end mill and uh, let, it, let it work. It's gonna probably take about two hours because that's a lot of material for a little 16th of an inch bit to take away but I ain't got nothing but time. So anyway, I'm gonna spin you around, show you the design, and we'll go ahead and get started on this thing. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna go into my setup. Like right now, I've got the width, which is like this, is that's 11 and a quarter, and it's 11 and 3 eighths tall. So 3 eighths of an inch to a decimal is 0.375, so that's where I have this set up. Uh, my material depth thickness, I use, I got some calipers I bought at Harbor Freight. I use, and uh, there it measures them at 0 0.768. And I always leave it at top. I use the lower left all the time. It's soft wood, my XXL. My retract height is 0 0.2. I have used that for everything I've done. And with the wood clamps I use, I've never had an issue. And my little squares are set at a quarter inch. I like the quarter inch squares. So with that said, the the job setup is done all right so we come in here to now what i did is you know of course you know how you do your import i came in here to uh, import and then drug these letters it was just the letters in the words and put them in here and centered them up on my material and then i used <clears throat> this let's see i just made a square somewhat about the same size of this and to get those rounded corners you come over here to square you can do fillet or a fillet whatever you want to call it whichever it is don't hold me to my lingo so if I want to do like point one no let's do let's do one and see how that'll do hit apply then there you rounds your corners right there now if you could do you can do champer Then you have flip, fillet, fillet, whichever. <laughs> and let's see. You got dog bone. And you have T. So there's your difference. What I did is I just did the fillet, fillet, whichever you want to call it. I did that one. And uh, got that going. So. We're not gonna need that. That's how you get that box. Now, if you just try to put this these words on here and you're gonna to go to cut it out, it's just gonna cut out the words. So you have to add this box, I guess what they call it, and y'all might correct me, some of y'all that's been doing this a while, but it has to have a closed vector 
for lack of better terms. So you got to have this going around it so that it'll, it will pocket, it will tell it to pocket around the letters. All right. So with that said, we're going to come over here. Let me delete this one because I'm not going to do that. Now, as you can see the blue, and then when I hit this, it's red. That's what it's going to cut. It's going to pocket all around those words. Now, I'm using a 1 16th inch end mill, and the reason I'm doing that is like some of these things, like right in here, if y'all can see that, or the A's down here, some of the letters are so tight that if you don't, let me see, like right here on this W, you see the tool path. It's not even going to get all the way down in here like it should because it's not that, it's, it's not thin enough. So basically, the 16th is the smallest bit I got. So I'm just going to go with it. But that's a whole lot of cutting that it's got to do. So we're going to do show simulation. And then you can see what I'm talking about. So right here at the W, you can see it's pretty close. The simulation is pretty close to what you're going to get at the end of the project. You just got to see if you're going to like it. So we'll tilt it up. I've got it set. I want to say I have it set for like an eighth of an inch deep. So my letters right here are going to stick up an eighth of an inch tall. Like I said, high enough to make a difference, but not high enough to where if somebody was to bump it, it'd make it brittle. Like especially the ends of these little flower thingamajiggies where it won't break it. So that's what she'll look like. Now, I took and stained, what I do is I pre-stain my wood. See, I ain't got the backside done, I just have the front. And the reason I do that is when you pre-stain it, when it cuts, everything, the outside edge and all the letters are going to be that black stain. Everywhere the bit runs, it's going to be, the, it's going to cut into it and it's going to make it that natural wood color, which I think is going to make the letters pop, at least I hope it is. So, uh... That's, that's why I do that. Now, just for the craps and giggles, I'm going to go into my, my tool setup. Like I said, it's a 1 16th inch end mill. It's made by Mana. I got it from Tools Today. I left all this, once I entered the tool, I left all this alone. So that's the stock settings. Start depth, I've never fooled with. Max depth is 0.125. Let me look at my decimal, make sure I'm right. Yeah, 0.125 is an eighth of an inch. So that's how, like I said, that's how deep it's going to cut around the letters. And then I've got it set to pocket. And I always come down here in the bottom, like do letters, pocket, 1.16, so I'll know what bit it is. Now, now we're going to be ready to cut it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit save G-code. Then I'm going to go to desktop, to my G-code section. And then I'm going to do, just so I know what it is, sort of stand out, 777. Jesus coffee 1.16 bit all right so now I'm gonna save that to my G code and now she's pretty much a done deal we can close out of this and we can open up carbide motion I gotta turn my machine on haven't used this thing in a good minute I've been so busy I ain't had a chance to play with my CNC machine plus it's been so dag blame hot so now I'm gonna initialize my machine. I'm not gonna sit here and make you wait for that. And I'm gonna let this thing, as you can see, she's initializing, gonna move over to the home, lock it all in. So I'm gonna get my wood anchored down with my clamps and then we'll be ready to cut. And I'll do, I'm not gonna bore you with a two hour cut. So I'll do a, what do you call it? I'm having a moment here. Uh, anyway, it's gonna cut real fast. Whatever you time lapse. There we go. Y'all help me. Good Lord. All right, be back in a second. All right. so. I just put the 1 16th inch bit. You can tell by my finger, that's a tiny little doohickey. All right, so now I'm gonna, uh, now I'm gonna set it up, which I use the touch probe. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and line all this up. I'll tell you, if you're getting started with this, learn from me, it's my, my mistake. Make sure you hook this alligator clip up because I didn't one day and I shattered a bit because it didn't know it was touching it. And then she just kept on sending it home until the bit snapped. Pit, what ticked me off. 
All right, so we're gonna line it up in that little square. I'm gonna get it as close as possible. And then we're gonna go to probe. We're gonna probe X, Y, Z. And I'm gonna do 1 16th of an end mill and then hit begin probing. <clears throat> and what I do just to make sure is I'll push on it to make sure that lip has got it. Sometimes I'll even hold it to make sure it don't move. That's gonna do this side, and uh, then it'll be done. All right, so those of you that don't know what that just did with this touch probe, these things are $120. I think they're worth their weight in gold. So basically what it just did is it knows how deep the bit is, it knows where the left edge is, it knows where this edge is, so now it's done. Now, from here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click done, and then, let me turn this light off right here for a second. And then I'm gonna pan you up to the TV. Let me see if I can zoom you in here. All right, so right there, I'm gonna go to load new file. And of course, I gotta go to my desktop and find G code. And then I'm gonna do the 777, there it is. So it's loaded. And it says 125 minutes, so 60 and 60 is 120, so about two hours, two hours and five minutes, give or take a few. It's not too bad. I mean, it still seems like it's a pretty long run, but I'll try to zoom you back out. Pretty long run, but that's, who cares? I ain't got nothing else to do. So anyway, now what I'm gonna do is I'll cut the router on. I'm not gonna touch anything else. I've got everything anchored down. I'm gonna turn the router on, then I'll hit start, run job and then just let the machine take it off so now i'm gonna put you in time lapse so you can see it without having to actually wait two hours Okay, I know this machine's loud in the background, but let me explain what's going on because I like to add everything real to life in my videos. I don't like to edit and make everything seem like it's perfect. So we were probably 35 minutes from being done with this project, as you can hear the CNC running behind me. And I got the notorious Shapoko crash. So it lost connection with the cutter you know it doesn't do it to me as often as it used to since i rewired everything in my shop and give everything a dedicated circuit matter of fact it hadn't done it in a while but of course when i go to do this video it wanted to crash on me so it crashed and now what i did is i hope you can hear me because i know that thing is loud as crap but uh so what i did was i went back into my settings and i went ahead and set the bit because it was almost done so I set the bit to cut to the full depth, which is 1.25, I think, eighth of an inch, whatever that is. I think it's 1.25. That way, it's gonna take another hour to go through it. Right now, it's, go, it's cutting, like air cutting. It's cutting where supposedly it's already cut until it gets to the part it left off. So let me flip you around and show you what I'm talking about. Right here where I zoom in, you can see where you got that raised lip right below the letters. That's where it crashed. and. What the machine is doing now is what I call air cutting. It's going through the motion until it gets to the point to where it left off after the crash and the restart. So it's time consuming, but it does work. All right guys, so this right here is what it looks like finished. Now, it is not uh perfect because where it crashed you see right here where it left this little bit of a depth all the way around it so i haven't taken it out of my clamps 
So I guess what I'm gonna do is I'll go back and on Carbide Create, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop the depth just a little bit more, maybe a 16th of an inch, and then run this all over again. That way it'll come back, if you can see this, that way to come back and take that one little lip off and make it all perfectly flat. But just to give you an idea, there it is with it raised. And you could go ahead and pre-staining and all that. It actually makes it makes it look really good if you can just keep this thing from crashing and screwing up in the middle of it. But anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this thing up. I'm not gonna video that part. I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna make it a sixteenth of an inch deeper than what it is run it all over again and then it'll take that little bit of a that raised edge right here away from it but if you got any questions shoot me a comment i'll try my best to answer them like i always say y'all have a nice day it's hot in this garage i'm ready to go in the house like subscribe until the next one